All right, guys, welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. Today we have a very special guest, the University of, I'm sorry, Rice University head baseball coach, Matt Braga. Coach Braga, thanks for joining us today. How you been doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you uh, for having me on today. Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity. Hopefully uh, our fans and, and myself learn a lot from you today. Um, kind of just start off by asking you, how was the season going before it, it got shut down and, and uh, were you guys headed in the right direction or, or talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, number one, uh, Wayne Graham, who I replaced is a legend in our sport in college baseball. Uh, one of the winningest coaches uh, to ever coach this game uh, has led the rice program to the prestige, the, the, you know, to the, where it's at um, made a name for that program, put it, put it on the map, so to say, seven College World Series appearances, a national championship, um, 196, uh, 190 MLB draft picks. Um, So what Coach Graham did with Rice Baseball um, is amazing. And what he did is one of the reasons I wanted the job because because of what he built this program to be. Now, with all of that being said, um, we're in a little bit of a rebuilding phase. Um, and, and, and when they hire a new coach, sometimes that's what happens. They, uh, you know, you, you, you go, uh, you go to, uh, you, you get hired to, to rebuild, so to say. And that's where we're at. My first full year at Rice, we were okay. I think we finished uh, sixth out of 12 in Conference USA. So it was okay. Um, won a couple games at the Conference USA tournament. Had five guys drafted. Um, nice. This season was not off to a great start. I'm being as honest as I can possibly be. Um, we were two and fourteen when COVID kind of hit us March 13th and shut things down. And uh, so it was a situation though where, listen, it is what it is. We probably don't, weren't ready for the schedule we played. We played the tenth toughest schedule in the nation. I'm not making excuses. Um, it's just reality, and quite honestly, at that moment in time, as of February and early March this year, we weren't ready. We weren't quite good enough, maybe is a better way to say it. We were ready, but we weren't quite good enough. And so you play Texas three times, we lose all three. Good games. We didn't get blown out of those games. Play right. Texas Tech three times on the road, we lost all three. Those were good games. One ended up getting out of hand a little bit, but those were good baseball games. One was an extra inning loss, what have you. So, so we have to get better. And that's been our job. I've never gone into a program ever. This is my third head coaching job. Right. Never have I gone into a program where I walked in and we were at the top and we were just going to stay at the top. It's always been some type of a rebuild. And as great as Rice Baseball has been and as wonderful of a coach as Coach Graham has and, and what the legacy he built at Rice – uh, just being honest, there's a rebuild to be done, and we're going to do it, and uh, we're we're, uh, we're getting ready to make that switch this coming season. Love it. Um, you came into a situation, a lot of pressure, big shoes to fill. Uh, is Coach Graham still uh, around the program, or is he kind of went off in the sunset? He he ha- he has go- he has left Houston. Him and his wife now live in Austin, Texas. Okay. So uh, so, but Coach Graham, I'll tell you what. The first day I got introduced as the head coach and. He was awesome. Like he was, he was great, you know? It, it, and, and so he showed my family and I around the whole facility. I mean, I, he probably took two hours with us that day. So he's been nothing but receptive. Um, the first six months I was on the job, they hadn't moved yet. Um, he would come in and, and just sit down in the front area of, of our offices and, and just talk baseball and reminisce about the past and things of that nature. And, um, what a great man, and, and uh, you know, pick his brain, you can learn a lot. Absolutely. Been, been around the game a long time. When I was at East Carolina, uh, we, we were in the conference with Rice, and, and it's always a tough game, always a tough game. Yeah. Um, well, so as far as the rebuild goes, uh, the first year maybe, how many recruits did you have that, that maybe you, you got in there yourself and, and maybe talk about the recruiting process? Yeah, so, so – um, it, it, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, Rice has, has a great academic reputation and, and uh, you know, great, just a great reputation in general in every facet. And right. so when I first, when I first came in um, at Rice, the recruiting class in 2018 
was already done. And so it was, it was a situation where um, we really didn't bring in any recruits that year. That class was done. Um, and then last year, kind of the way it worked, um, we, we were able to bring in eight, um, eight guys last year. So, so really in the first two recruiting classes, cycles, whatever you want to call it, um, we've had eight guys come in. Um, this class that's coming in this fall will be our first full class. Um, nice. Rice, Rice, this is, this is great what they do. Sometimes as a baseball coach, the more guys you have, the better, because mathematics says your odds are better of hitting on guys. If we bring in 20 guys, you only bring in 10. Our chances of hitting on good players are double what yours are. But Rice has limits on, on how many guys we can bring in. But we use that as a positive. When we're talking to young men, we use that as a, hey, you know, this is a program that, that you're going to get an opportunity to, to, you know, you're not going to be one of 25, so to say. You're going to be one of 10, 12, 13 guys that we're bringing in. So the class we're bringing in this fall, um, it looks like right now is going to be 13 strong. And, nice. and it's, a, it's a really, really good class. We're really excited about it. Hey, bear with me for a second. I'm on my phone, and it's gonna, it's dying. So no hold on one second. You got to love technology, right? Oh, my goodness gracious. Is this the first Google Meet? I have not. I have not. We have been using, uh, we have been using Zoom is, is how I've been doing calls and meetings and things of that nature. But, um, but, but uh, when you sent it to me, I figured the app out really quickly. So, yeah, which, which, which is a good thing. Right, hey, one thing I want to go back to and say, sure. though, and I think this is important to say, um, I am not the type of coach. Now, get now, I'm not ever going to tell you. I might say, hey, we've got a little bit of a rebuild to do. We do. We weren't good enough this spring. But I am not sitting here saying, oh, just wait till we get our guys in. Right. Wait till we get our guys. No, like. Listen, these young men that we have here, a lot of them will be back because of COVID next year. A lot of these guys will be back for another year. Um, I'm excited about these guys. I, I think there's a lot of great young men that have ability. So please understand, you know, I don't want to sound like, hey, where do we get our that, – that's not who I am. Let's go figure okay. it out with who we've got. And, and that's the plan uh, for 2021. Right, right. All right, so we're struggling, uh, probably trying to figure out, okay, how, how can we get this ship righted? And bam, COVID hits. T talk to me about where you guys were, were. Were you together? Did you have to send out a text? How did you, how did you break the news that we're not going to be able to get the ship right this year? Yeah, and, and, and that, was, that was a tough one. So we're, we're actually, we, we were together. Um, we had just got done uh, Tuesday night playing Texas A&M. And then it was Wednesday, uh, the next day at practice, um, or Thursday. It's one of the next two days at practice that we change our practice schedule because I get the word from our athletic department that, hey, um, this weekend for sure is not happening and it could be more. And sure enough, it was more. And we shut down. That was our last day. We didn't even practice. It was one of those things where I'm, like, I'm kind of a, hey, let's keep working kind of guy like, and I'm like, ah, this isn't looking good. So, yeah. so we told the guys, hey, here's where we're at. Just sit tight for a little bit. This weekend for sure is canceled. We'll get back together and tell you guys what's going on. So we got back together, and, and sure enough, the, the season, you know, canceled and done. And, you know, the, the difficult thing for me as a coach and our players, they didn't – we're, we've been – it is what it is, and, and rightfully so. I'm not, I'm not disappointed or upset with anyone for right. judging us on a 2-14 and 14 start. We have to – we need to – that's not good enough. I don't care who you are, 2-14. and 14, I don't care who you play. You can play the Yankees 16 times, and, and that's – you need to do better. Like, I get it. Right. But at the same point in time, you're a baseball guy, right? You're East Carolina. So at right. the same point in time, like – I, I used to be a Don – I'm still a Don Mattingly fan. Mattingly hit horrible in the month of April. And, but that dude always hit over 300, probably 323, 30, 340. Right. But April was bad to Don Mattingly. Last year, 
Look at the Washington Nationals. They were, what, 19 and 31 after 50 games? People right. had written them off. Oh, these guys are no good. Well, they won the World Series. You know, and that's the disappointing thing for me is everyone looks at it and says, oh, hey, you guys stunk. No, we were, we were a pretty good team. And, and our team had stayed together. Culture's good. When you're 2-14, and 14, sometimes you got to be like, uh-oh, is the cult? Culture's good. This right. was a group that I believe in, and I would have loved to have seen how it played out. And I think that's why they're excited, because most of them get the opportunity to come back. And so far, as far as I know, everybody that can come back is coming back. Right. As far as seniors go, I mean, you're losing how many guys as far as that goes? We're, we're, we, had, we had six seniors, um, okay. and one was a graduate student already, and he is moving on. The okay. other five, um, as, as far as I know, you never know, right? Times change, things change. But as far as I know, the other five will all be back with us this, uh, this coming year. That's very fortunate. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that they'll be able to finish their playing cur- career out on the right method. You know, there's a lot of stories out there where it's, it's so sad that it's just been yanked away from them. They couldn't have it. Um, yes. so that's good for them. And I know they're going to be hungry. Let me ask you how, how you guys stayed together as a program during this time i mean you talked a little bit about zoom is that how you connected yeah so so early on we we did a couple meetings within the first two weeks and and then the next two weeks we probably did one um and then we took some breaks because of uh you know final exams and things like that nature and then we've done one since then so we've only had Four, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's this is right. Four Zoom meetings since we broke March 13th. Now, with that being said, what our coaching staff is doing, um, I am making random calls. I'm talking to the guys. Probably, I'm not overwhelming them. I, I'm not. It's not the time to do that right now. I'm calling our guys roughly once every four weeks. I rotate through our roster, make you make each guy a call about once every four or five weeks. Um, our position coaches, our unit leaders are calling and communicating sometimes via Zoom as groups and sometimes individually as phone calls roughly once a week, sometimes once every other week. So our infield coach, that's what he's doing with that group. Our outfield coach, that's what he's doing with that group. Pitching staff, pitching coach. I think you get what I'm saying. So that's kind of how those, those meetings and groups are going on where our guys are staying connected. Now, with that being said, we've had some downtime because we had, at, you know, the NCAA, you could, we couldn't even communicate with them for a couple weeks. Um, so, um, but, but that's where we're at, and I think it's been good. I don't think we've overburdened them, but at the same point in time, our, our strength coach has been on with them, keeping them rolling, that type of thing. So, overall, I'm happy with where we're at and where our guys are at and where their mindset's at. Great, and you, you led right into it, you know, do you know of any mental issues that your guys are having since they, they can't have baseball? It's, it's something that's never been taken from them unless they've been injured. Um, how are they handling it? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And it's one that early on, um, our, our first team meeting, everybody, although everyone was disappointed, everyone was joked because it had been, I said the first week we met, it was probably a couple weeks in actually that our first team meeting was, so we hadn't met in a little while. Everyone was in a really good mood, jovial, joking around and kidding with each other, that type of thing. A month later, guys still having fun. They're a good group. They like each other, et cetera. But it definitely, the mood had changed a little bit. Like people were like, oh boy, like time to get back to routine coach. Like it's time yeah. to be able to get out and do things and, we're kind of sick of being at home. We can't lift weights. You know, we're having to, we're having to do body weight stuff. It's not the same, you know, we're, where do we go hit? Where do we go throw? Where do we go run? And so they, you know, they had some things taken away from them that they weren't used to. None of us were. And uh, you know, that, that was difficult. But then the last meeting we had, things are kind of getting back a little more to normal. And I feel like our guys have rebounded a little bit. Absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, being a teacher and coach myself, you know, that's one thing that I have seen and noticed is the kids not being able to have that structure that they that they they really need. 
but what we always tell them is, hey, this is the beautiful part about it. You can create your own schedule. You can do things on your own. You can be creative. Nobody's holding you down to go to school for eight hours a day. Um, yeah. Make it work. Yeah. So that's I something. Like that. That, yeah, that's, that's exactly good. right. Make your own routine. Yeah. Right. And, and you got to do something. I mean, I know it's tough when maybe you're, you know, uh, no brothers or sisters and your dad's too old to play catch. I mean, college baseball players probably struggled a little bit getting some reps in. I mean, yeah. is yeah. that something – that you've talked to him about, like, hey, you, you hadn't seen live pitching in two months. It's it's going to be an adjustment phase. Yeah, no, we we absolutely have. And one thing we did with our pitchers, uh, we we probably like a lot of programs, we actually took advantage of some time and told them, don't touch a baseball until okay. we tell you to touch a baseball. So we actually had them take time off. Arms, arms, as you know, a lot of guys have like, there's only so many throws in your arms sometimes. Right. And so, so that was a good rest period for our pitchers um, from a throwing standpoint. From a workout standpoint, absolutely. Like our strength coach, Coach Crash, how about that Crash, right? I like that. It d- d- does a phenomenal job with, with our guys and motivating them and giving them plans and routines. They did a fabulous job. Coach Crash did a fabulous job in giving these guys plans that could be done with bands body weight, um, things of that nature. That way there's no excuses. Here's your plan. Go get it done. And for the most part, as you know, having played at a high level of collegiate baseball, um, our guys are so self-motivated and they've been working hard. And, and now baseball, it's time. Okay. You know, our pitchers, have, most of them have already been throwing now for a little over a month and have thrown their first bullpens, hoping to be able to get some summer league action things of that nature. So baseball is back in back in full play for a lot of our guys. And hopefully uh, many of them are going to get to play some summer ball somewhere. Absolutely. Um, and you're in, in Texas currently, correct? Correct. Yeah, I know. I, I work with a few athletes uh, in, in Texas and, and they're scrimmaging, they're playing games. I'm like, thank God. You know, I can't touch my athletes still in North Carolina as far as working with them. Um, and it's driving me crazy, to be quite honest with you. But I can't wait to get back and get that process going. All right, so mindset. Let's talk a little bit about baseball mindset. If you were to put a number on it, uh, everybody always talks about uh, Yogi Berra's quote. What would you say was the percent that you'd put on the mental aspect of baseball? (laughs) I think his quote's about accurate, to be honest. What is it, 90%? Then the other half is physical? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yes, Um, it's it's, it's, It's huge. Obviously, and you know this, you got to have talent. You got to have skills. You got to have the want want to and desire are mental, though, to me. So, like, you can't you can't take a young man with no talent, no skills, and 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 no work ethic, and make him mentally become a great player. And now he's going to go out and do it. That won't happen that way. Um, but if a young man has talent and he's got some a skill set that is good, um, the game becomes totally mental. I mean, I, honestly, I think the game is, you know, uh, if I give you a number, seventy-five percent. If you're right. if you're a good if you're a good baseball player, you're a talented player, then the separating factor is your mental game. And, you know, what's your plan at the plate? What's your plan at the mound? What's your approach? Those are all mental things. What, what's your mindset? How much do you believe in yourself? How tough are you? Are you going to work? Are you, are you driven? Are you passionate? Are you an energy guy? Those are mindsets. That, that, no one can convince me those are physical gifts. Energy is a mindset. Right. And so you look at that, and even if, you, if you've got a young man with some skill and some talent, and, but not as not your most talented guy. Maybe you're not your most your, your most skilled guy, but he's your toughest guy mentally. He works harder because he's mentally tougher. He's got a passion more than anyone else because of his mental game. The way he goes, he's more energized because of his mind. He he believes he's better than everybody on the field, even though he really isn't because of his mind. Then all of a sudden, that player who might be talent wise your eighth or ninth best. He might be your number one or two guy because his mind is taking him over the top. Right. And, and I've got players in the past that I can point to that say, hey, that kid's mental game made him who he was. 
And so I, you can't put enough emphasis on the mental side. Right. And, and the thing we always see is the number is so high when, when we, I, we ask that question every we go. And then we turn around and say, OK, so what do you do to train that aspect if it's so important? So I, I'm going to turn around on you. The, do you, uh, Matt Braga, do anything to uh, work on mindset or does the university, Rice University, do anything uh, to help out with with mindset? Yeah, so we we uh, we have. Huh, it's typically three days a week, right on our practice schedule, um, where we actually put it in. Uh, it's probably more than three. It's three to five days a week, depending on the week, where we'll where we'll put it right in the practice schedule. So we'll have um, we call it player development, personal development, and it's either at the beginning or end of practice, and we'll start off. That can be anything. That can be um positive thinking it can be listening to a podcast it can be listening to one of our coaches um, or development coaches or people it can be um breathing exercises it can be visualization exercises where you're literally laying on the ground as, as, as you see in some videos or sitting in a chair laying on the field if it's you know a nice day um you know those types of things so we do it all and it's actually taught within our practices, Chase. So, so what do I mean by that? Like, we, we teach you – now, we don't want to make you clones because everybody's different. Mm -hmm. But we'll literally teach guys, hey, when I go to the plate, like, or when I'm taking towing the rubber, you know, this is where my mind should be. Like, like literally, you want to be an autopilot. You don't want to be thinking about mechanics. It's right. autopilot mindset. But, but literally, our son and I were just talking about this. Like, put the best pitcher on the mound in the country. I can't wait to step in the box against him because I'm hammering him. Period. Right. Like, that, that's a mindset. That's the mental game. Compared to the guy that's like, oh, ooh, this guy's the best pitcher in the country. Uh-oh. That guy's going to lose. Like, we are going to try to teach you and recruit – young men that have that competitive nature to them that's like hey i don't care who's on the bump if i'm pitching i don't care who's in the box i'm beating you i might only throw 85 miles per hour but i am going to beat you because of how i know to pitch i'm going to shake false shake i'm going to double pump i'm going to do anything i can to beat you so we are teaching that as well as routines when things don't go good how do you respond mentally physically so on and so forth so to answer your question Yes, we are all about teaching that. I love that. Um, I don't hear that that answer a lot. What it made me think of was predator versus prey mindset, which is what, you know, that's kind of our bread and butter topic. What thoughts are you having? You know, and we do school sport in life. So so if you see that pitcher throwing 96 and you're like, oh, crap, he's throwing 96. That's a prey thought. And so we have to we have to, first of all, catch ourselves thinking that. And then we have to replace it with a predator thought. It doesn't matter how hard he throws. I'm going to, I'm going to rip him, whatever. Um, here's the hard part. Cause you talked about it. You're going with that confidence. What if you fail now? How do you keep that confidence? And what do you tell your guys about that? Um, hey, I, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm answering you a little bit slow. Cause I'm writing something down that you said, cause I liked it so much. Great. Let's see. That's prey mindset. Okay. Um, yeah, so so the the bottom line with that is is you you get this. We have a lot of guys. Every program does that. They overthink. They strike out their first at bat. They ground out, roll over second at bat. They pop up third at bat. They're down in the end of the dugout, uh, kind of shaking their head like, "Oh my goodness, what is wrong with me? Like, what is wrong with me? Like." We can't, we can't go there. Like you have to find a way to reset, right? Like you have right. to find a way to reset. So we, we will teach reset. We've, we've stolen some thoughts on, from mental coaches like yourself on how to do that, right. you know? And, and so, so we'll teach kind of how to reset and get back to the mindset they need to be at. With all of that being said, though, we both understand being baseball players you can't be perfect, and even in your mind, every day, because there's only one perfect that's ever walked this earth, and it ain't you or me. You know Amen. what I'm saying? So, so we can't, we cannot 
beat it every day. So as a coach, what we have to do is do the best we can to make young men move on. And we do that at Rice, and I've done this my whole career, just build up, build up, build up. Now, sometimes we got to get on you, right? Yeah. But for the most part, when a young man is down, we are, our job is to build that young man up. You're great. It's okay. Everything's great, man. You're a stud. Whatever it may be, that's my job. Hey, let's go to the cages. I'm, we're fixing this right now. And we may do nothing. I mean, honestly, we may be, at the end of the day, we – we t told him we were going to make some changes and try to make some changes, but maybe nothing really happened. But we worked with him and worked his mind more than anything and led him to believe, okay, I'm ready for tomorrow. And, and I think that's where we tried to take. And then the last thing I'll say, going to a stat that so many programs in the country keep, we focus heavily on quality at bats instead of obviously batting average because – I want guys going home confident at the end of the day. And it's easy to be it's easier to be three for four quality at bats than it is three for four with hits. Yeah, and baseball's so unforgiving. It's it's just almost like it's unfair. You'll hit a line shot and, and you're out. But you'll hit a little, you know, what my old coach would say, a duck fart, and you're in your own base. It's like it's not right. So the guy that's stroking and hitting the ball in the gap but still getting ran down. He feels bad about that, and it's like, dude, you just ripped it. It's okay. Go up there and do it again. He's not going to make that catch next time. Yes. The crazy Yes, thing. That, that's exactly right. You know when I learned that lesson? And listen, I was not a highly recruited player out of high school, but I learned that lesson um, one time as many years ago. One time I went 0 for 3 with a walk in a game, and I literally lined out to the warning track three times. But as a, as a high school player, I think it was like my sophomore or junior year, the summer, um, I'm all down. Like, oh, I was 0 for 3, doggone it, you know. And and uh, Clemson, uh, Jim Littlefield, Dave Littlefield, I'll never forget. I said Jim, Dave Littlefield at the time was one of their, their recruiting coordinator. And he comes up to me after the tournament's over and says, hey, listen, um, it was our last game of the tournament. Dude, I think you can rake. And I'll never forget it. I'm like, what? I was 0 for 3. I didn't say that. I'm like, what? I was 0 for 3. But in his mind, what he didn't care, what he, what you said is exactly what he saw. And from, from that moment on, it helped me as a player. Even though they did not end up recruiting me, they realized my arm wasn't good enough and I was too <laughs> slow. And, you, you can know, hit. You can't so, run. You can't. I, was... I could hit okay now, yeah. But, but, uh, but, but it helped me. Like that, As a young player, him telling me that helped me a lot. There's powers that, power in the in words people use. Um, it, it, two things I want to just inter, iterate real quick, reiterate. You said reset button. That's that's a whole unit that we work on. We teach kids how to how to reset themselves, catch. It's almost like an alcoholic. You know you have a problem and fix it. You got to realize what you're thinking. Uh, and a lot of the times, the words we use lead to the thoughts, and then the thoughts we have are going to lead to our actions. And ultimately, the actions that, that we that we distribute or we or we perform are going to lead to our destiny. So we, we, we always try to show up that link in that chain. That, hey, what words are you using? I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do it. No, there's, there's no try. There's either do or don't. Um, I talked to a kid just yesterday. Pretty, pretty good player in Texas. You might see him one day. I'll talk about him later. But uh, he said, when I'm over three, it's like I might have two more at bats, but it's like, what's the point? I'm over three. I'm. I'm not going to get out of the slump. I said, well, what words did you just use? And then he started seeing the, the chain. I said, that's why you're still 0 for 3, 0 for 4, 0 for 5, because you don't feel like you can get over that hump. You told yourself that. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Hey, that is that is great stuff. And, you know, it's, it's so funny. Um, you're 100% you're, you're right. You know, if you tell yourself something, that's what's going to happen. The actions are going to follow what your thoughts are and what you've told yourself that self-talk so that's powerful i, I love i love uh i wrote that down as well so <laughs> hey, we're both I'm taking learn, i'm learning awesome. i love it awesome that's what it's all about okay a couple more questions let's see here um have you got a situation that you could talk about where, where you saw the body language on a kid and you knew he was down and then you helped him get out of that funk he was in just by watching the way he moved yeah, I think I think so. Sorry about our dog barking uh, in, in, in the background, but yeah, I, th I think so. Um, probably, 
probably multiple times um, in my career, but just because I've been coaching so long. Right. Um, one of the things that I've always, you know, prided myself on is, you know, being able to help people mentally and, and um, you know, being able to, you know, build guys up and, and that type of thing. So I think, you know, you look at it, there are no doubt, I mentioned earlier how, if a young man is struggling, how at the end of a game or maybe before a game the next day, be like, hey, let's go to the cages and, and, and get some work in. And basically, you're working on something. Maybe the young man was pulling off the ball, um, getting outside, hands were casting, whatever it might be. So we're really working on something. It's not all just, you know, eyewash by any stretch. But while you're in that setting, there is no doubt over the course of my career that what you're saying to that young man, not just the mechanical part, but the mind part, is helping that young man get out of that slump. And he goes out there that afternoon and goes off, three for four, two doubles, a home run. And he comes up to you at the end of the day, he's like, wow, coach, thanks so much. And really you didn't do that much other than make the kid believe he's better than what he thought he was at that point in time. And, and that's been done multiple times in my career. And think about this. The program I was at, Tennessee Tech, uh -huh. now we recruited really, really well. But we, we were not a blue chip recruit program. We weren't. So our job as coaches were to find the hidden gems. And right. we found a bunch of great young men that were hidden gems, great players. But our job then was to develop them to the utmost of their ability and make them believe that they're even better than they are. And that's my job here. That would be my job wherever I coach. And that is mindset, period. Right. So we are right. always, always hitting on that. That's awesome. Um, something we also talk about a lot is goals and, and having, you know, writing them down, having an action plan to follow through with your goals. We're not just making a wish and say, hey, we're going to be a state champ or, or whatever. We're, we're actually have a process to get there. Um, what would you say – the future for Rice Baseball holds. What are your goals? Where do you want to take this program? Uh, and, and maybe we'll just kind of finish up with that. All right. So sounds good. Um, you know, ever since I got into coaching college baseball, I mean, when you're a Division One, there's one place to go. And, and I think we all know that that's Omaha. So quick story. When I interviewed in 2000, November of 03 at Tennessee Tech University, um, ooh, there was a lot of work to do, by the way. My first full year there, we were 13 and 42. So, <laughs> so that's a long year. I blame my hair loss on that year, right? So, yeah, right. But, but no, so, so we had a lot of work to do. But when I was being interviewed there, they said, hey, Matt, before you leave, there was a committee of like eight people. They say, hey, before you leave, you got anything else for us? And I said, yeah, open, open your little book that I gave you, please, to the last page. And they all opened it up. And I, it was a picture at that time of, of Rosenblatt Stadium. And, and I explained to them what it was. Because was they even had a school a high school principal or a middle school principal on the committee and not a baseball person per se. And. So I explained to them, I said, listen, there's a picture of Omaha, Rosenblatt Stadium, College World Series. You hire me as your coach. I'm telling you, Tennessee Tech, we will be in Omaha. I can't give you a deadline or a timeline or anything like that. This is where we'll be. And there were actually a couple chuckles in the back right corner of the room. And, and I left, and my wife and I, my girl and I, we were driving home, and she goes, hey, how did it go? I said, I think it went great. Other than it's probably not good when people are laughing about a comment you made at the very end, almost like, ah, there, there ain't no way that's it. like, and so, so, but I'm like, we'll see. 30 minutes later, they said, Hey, Braga, we want you to be our coach. And, and the bottom line is where I'm going with the story is at Tennessee tech. We did not make it. I was there 15 seasons, 14 and a half years. We were a game away. My last year in 2018, we were in a super regional at Austin, Texas against Texas. We beat them game one. They came back and beat us two games. But the bottom line is, 
if you know me and get to know me, that's that's what I am. That's who I that's what I think about. That's the goal. That's the objective. That is what we will do. And the objective is not to get there. The objective is to win it. And I don't care who hears me say it. Like I'm 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 not bragging. I would say that whether I was no matter where I coached in this country, that would be the objective and the goal. And I would say it no matter where I'm at. And I think the reality of it is. Um, I heard a TED talk on this, and I believe it. The more you put your goals out there and say them, the more real they become. Just like the self-talk you were talking about earlier. The more a guy goes, hey, I'm hammering right here. The more he's going to hammer. The more he says, uh-oh. The, the more uh-oh is going to happen. So <laughs> we tell our guys, hey, put your goals out there. They got to be realistic. It's realistic yeah. at Rice to go to Omaha. It was realistic at Tennessee Tech to go to Omaha in my mind. Right. So anyway, that's the goal. That's the objective. Our players know that. Um, however, with that being said, I do let them choose the goals. They, I don't, I don't say, hey, Omaha or bust. Hey, what are our goals this year, guys? I want them to have ownership of it. But I think the guys that are coming to Rice and coming to play for me, I know what their goals are. They want to play in Omaha just like you want to be there, right? No doubt. Yes, sir. <laughs> I agree with you. You don't know when, you don't know how, you don't know what time, but it's coming. And you got to keep that, no doubt. that belief and that mindset. And, Coach, I, I trust that you're going to be there. I, I'm hoping to see you on, on uh, ESPN next year when we get this freaking girl. <laughs> Sounds right like, here. I love it. Yeah, let's get this over. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, look, if there's anything we can do for you at Baseball Mindset, we're, we're trying to grow this brand. We, we started with wrestling and it took off. And now we know the value in other sports, especially baseball in this country. Uh, one of the most mental sports there is. Uh, I'd love to sit down and talk with you and chat if, if you got any questions about it. If not, uh, I'll be following you. I, I, I do. Like I said, I do believe you're going to you're going to reach that goal of getting to the uh, what do you call it? The, the land of milk and honey, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, hey, listen, I, uh, you guys, you guys send out, you guys have some great stuff that you send out, and you know the the emails I get from you guys. There's always so much value in that. And listen, we are always looking for ways to improve our program. Um, and so, uh, so I would love at some point to get together with you and and uh, and just talk to see how we can help Rice baseball. Because listen, this is an edge, a slight edge. That not everyone uses. And if Absolutely. we can find an edge, we'll take it. And it's it's the ultimate edge. I mean, you know, the mindset makes the difference. Winners yes. win. Champs are, are champs. And the difference between a champ and a chump is what I tell my athletes I work with individually is you. It's, it's what you're going to do. Like, how, yeah. What are you going to put into it? Um, I think this has been great. Yeah. And I know you're a busy guy. Get back on the recruiting trail, I'm sure. And, and you know. Get, get that Rice Owl program exactly where you want it, Coach, and I, and I really appreciate your time today. Hey, thank you for your time and for having me on. I'm humbled. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm to myself. I, don't, I, I don't know how to leave. <laughs> All right, I'm at the exit. We'll be good. Take care, coach. There we go. See you, buddy. <laughs>